Well, good morning. Good morning. Monday morning, uh, January 23rd, 2023. Here we are. Here you are. It's cold. It's snow covered. It didn't snow last night, but it's still snow covered from the last time and it's cold. It's, uh, I don't know, <clears throat> in the teens anyway. Yeah, the Bonnie said hoarfrosty. The the trees are covered with that that hoarfrost that comes from freezing fog. Um, apparently, we had we had some fog, but it is it is beautiful. I've got my insulated flannel on. It's it's that kind of a day. A turtleneck and insulated flannel. That what? Well, she says 14 degrees. Weather service is 12 degrees. All I know is it's cold, <clears throat> and I'm a little stuffy, and I think I got a. <clears throat> a bit of a cold uh, coming on, which wouldn't surprise me. I was down in Fort Rain, Indiana last, Fort Rain, Windiana last week. And, uh, you know, it was in the 40s, so there was a lot of time that I was just going in my shirt sleeves. I mean, I, I'm still dressing the way I do in Wisconsin, so I had my longies on and I had an uh, extra shirt under my <clears throat> under my clerical or whatever overshirt I was wearing. But instead of putting on a coat, I'd just go because... It was warm. You know, it's amazing how the body, uh, how, how God has made our bodies to respond to our, our environment. And, um, you know, in the fall, when the temperatures start to blow, drop below 60, I'm cold all the time. Uh, but all of a sudden you get to the middle of winter when the temperatures are freezing or under all the time and you get that 10 degree boost. It's like, oh, well, it's warm. Somebody made a comment to me when I was down there in Fort Wayne about, oh, well, you're from you're from Wisconsin. You should be wearing shorts in this weather. And I said, uh-uh, mm-mm, not this guy, not this guy. Yeah, 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 I don't I don't do the shorts thing when it's when it's uh, well, I really don't wear shorts unless it's over seventy. Um, Bonnie says I don't wear shorts. That's not true. I wore shorts in in Michigan when it was warm all the time. I wore shorts when we lived down in. In Fort Wayne, I even had nice shorts for going to school. Okay, I don't wear shorts. I do wear a kilt. Does that count? Kilt is different, though. Uh, kilt is different, though. Anyway, good morning. Good morning. Here we are for our daily devotions on this Monday morning. <clears throat> I apologize. There's going to be some of that because I'm something's going on. Um, I thought it was my ears plugged up and it was causing my sinuses to be uncomfortable. I cleaned my ears out yesterday and now I'm, this is more than you want to know. Good morning. Uh, let's see who's here with us. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Ashley, good morning. Leela, good morning. By the way, my computer is not, the, the comment screen is not updating the way that it it should be. So I'm, if I if I miss you, I, I apologize. It's not intentional. It's just I don't know. Uh, so Leela, good morning. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Michael, good morning. No weather to, no weather report. Okay, just good morning. All right. Yeah, because you don't want to tell me how nice it is down there. You know what? That's okay. Don't. We're headed into a couple of days of teens and single digits here for the next week, week and a half. But it's the end of January going into February. What do you expect? Jerry, good morning. Overcast. Okay, yeah, we're overcast too here. <clears throat> you know, when it's this cold and the sun does come out, it's kind of amazing. Um, that that crisp air with sun shining through it is just wild. Verna, good morning to you. Jill and John, good morning. Now, I'm going to try, and I'm just refreshing the comments. Nothing changed. Now I'm going to refresh the whole Facebook screen and see what that does. <clears throat> I got to... I gotta go into that help and stuff and see if I can figure this out. Nope, Jill and John are the last ones on my screen. I don't know who's last on your screen, but Jill and John are the last. What? All right, all right. So I'm gonna we're gonna go ahead here and get underway. I I got other stuff I want to get done today. So I'm glad you're here with us. Let's get into what we have. Oh, um, to those lurking in the background, hi, and to those watching later, either here on Facebook or on. YouTube, I'm glad you're here with us. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever applies to you, please apply. Oh, I didn't see Mushtaq here. Well, maybe he'll join us later. He did. For those that, that sent a, a contribution to him, by the way, you probably already know because he's probably already communicated it, but um, 
I did send the monies to him last week, um, finally, and and he was able to purchase the. Uh, I don't know what size screen he got, but he wanted to buy a large screen TV to do slides for his Bible study that he does each morning there for each uh, Saturday morning um, for the people there in Pakistan. And he was able, thrilled to be able to do that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we did that. So let's, uh, yeah, okay, let's get into this. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Squirrel, somebody has pulled a snowmobile trailer past. Uh, for individuals and families, page 295, the morning order. Uh, treasury of daily prayer I have right here before me as we begin the devotional part of this silliness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. My mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My microphone's in the wrong place. My keypad's in the wrong place. Everything, everything's just kind of goofed up here. Um, all right. Uh, our psalm today, what button do I want to push? I'm on that there. i got to remember how to do this stuff. It's like I've been gone for a week. <clears throat> I know I did it on Saturday, but that was Saturday. Our psalm today, Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6, and verses 12 through 14. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know all together. You hem me in, behind and before me, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day. For darkness is as light with you. For you have formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You have searched me and know me. When I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, acquainted with all my ways. Before I speak, before the word is even on my tongue, you know already, altogether. You are before me and behind me, and your hand is upon me. It's too wonderful for me. You know... There isn't anything that God does not know. Now, uh, keep in mind, and, and never forget this, that that knowledge uh, knowledge is not causality, right? Just because God knows something does not mean he is the cause of that thing, right? We, we always have to keep that in mind. God knew before Adam and Eve fell that they would fall. And long before he put his son upon the cross for you, he knew that he would do it. Um, he's not the cause of it. He's not the cause of these things. He's not the cause of sin. Um, but he, he knows them, and he knows you. And he knows everything that you will say and everything that you will do your entire life from beginning to end. From the moment that you are conceived in the womb, in fact, from the foundation of the world, he has known you. And he formed you in the womb. I suppose on this this week, um, and I believe this is the week that uh, the Right to Life March in, or in in Washington has taken place. Our, was it on Friday? See, I said it was on Friday, but she said there weren't any posts. No, it was on Friday. Okay. All right.
Oh, I didn't know that. She said that that during during the last presidency, the t January twenty second was declared National Right to Life Day, and and I guess that's not bad since I celebrated right our sanctity of human life yesterday during during our Sunday service. So it was on the twenty second. How convenient. Um. But but now 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 you lost me, squirrel. Um. Well, yeah, I, I know that's what I was saying is God knows everything there is to know about us and he knows all things. Um, and, and this knowledge, this even David, the psalmist says, this knowledge is beyond me. Uh, this is this is more than I can understand. It's too wonderful to attain. God's wisdom is above our wisdom. And this is so far above it that we have no hope of ever understanding it in this life, in this world. And perhaps we don't need to, right? I mean, that's that's what caused the fall is Adam and Eve well, they were tricked by the serpent saying, if you eat this, you'll become like God and know, right? And have knowledge. And and maybe it's better that we don't know. Maybe it's better that we, not that we be ignorant fools because we're not, but that we trust in God for all things. And, and there's a joy in that. Then you don't have to get worked up about things, right? If you know that God is in control and God is taking care of things and whatever God wills for you and I is good, and, and right and salutary, 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 then you've got nothing to worry about. Uh, the psalmist says, I, I, and, and this is something we've lost in our day and age too, this this last part. We, we jump from verse 6 to verse 12, but um, you formed my inward per parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We are, right? Um, we're quick in this day and age to despise the body, despise this tent in which we dwell. And it is a tent, right? <clears throat> it's given to us to live in for a time. A tent is a temporary dwelling place. Um, and this one that is racked by the effects of sin is but for a time, but it is still fearfully and wonderfully made. It's still a, a gift from our heavenly father, right? And to be treated, if, if God gives you a gift, don't you take care of it, right? Um, uh, don't you don't you uh, appreciate it? And and when you're done with it, instead of throwing it in the trash heap or burning it in the in a dung heap, don't you don't you put it away carefully? Um, and on the last day, you'll be raised in uh, in this flesh, in this body, right? Without sin, perfect and glorified, but without sin. But this is the body that you will have uh, without the effects of sin on it in the in the in the resurrection. And that's what Job tells us. On that day, I will look upon the Lord with my own eyes, right? These eyes, right? Without these, because the, the, the glasses are an effect of the, the eyes not being able to see well are an effect of sin. The results of sin, not my sin, but the sin of this fallen nature, which we are in, that causes things to age and die and fall apart. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. All right, let's let's move on to our, our reading today. So we're in the book of <clears throat> we're in the book of Joel. I have not spent a lot of time reading the book of Joel. We had the first chapter, first verses, what verses, I don't know, one through twenty or something. What was the first chapter on on Saturday? Today uh, we're starting on, on the second chapter, verse 18, because we, we uh, of course, you were in church yesterday, right? <laughs> you, church, yesterday? So we skip over Sunday and we come to Monday here, the 23rd, and we're at Joel chapter 2, verse 18 to 32. <clears throat> then the Lord became jealous for his land. Uh-oh, we got a then there. Mm. And had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. I will remove the northerner far from you and drive him into a parched and desolate land, his vanguard into the eastern sea, and his rear guard into the western sea. The stench and foul smell of him will rise, for he has done great things. 
Fear not, O land, and be, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Fear not, you beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dwelt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and there is no one else. And my people shall never again be put to shame. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. <clears throat> the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So on Saturday, when we were reading, um, God had sent, um, God said, or Joel said that God was sending um, fire and uh, the, the um, mm, the, the uh, devouring, the devouring locusts. Um, I was looking here to see what it was because it was kind of um, what the, what the, uh, uh, da, 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 what the cutting locust left, the swarm locust eats. What the swarm locust left, the hopping locust eats. What the hopping locust left is destroyed. The destroying locust eat. Um, and so he, Joel speaks first the destruction by the coming of the of the locusts. Um, but here, and what we missed yesterday was the call to repentance and the and the turning of the people back to God. Um, uh, mm, Mm, I got to get here. Uh, between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest minister to the Lord and weep. Spare your people, O Lord. Make your heritage not an approach, or make not your heritage an approach by a byword by the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? So a, a call to repentance and the people repent. The priests are calling upon God and weeping. And then today we get, then the Lord became jealous for his land. So he turns back uh, to the to the land of his people and has pity on them. Um, and I would be interested, I didn't do it, but I would be interested to delve into both the uh, uh, Septuagint, which is in Greek, or the... Um, or the the Masoretic script, which is the the Hebrew, and see what the origin of that word pity is. If it's if it's pity or if it's more compassion, um, and I would I would bet that though it says pity here, um, it, it's it's more focused on on God's compassion, pity out of compassion, um, and so then He restores, right, sending grain and wine and oil, um, making them no longer a reproach removing the northerner far from them uh, and driving them to a parched land. The, the vanguard, the forward troops into the East Sea and the rear guard into the Western Sea, dividing the troops and, and pushing them out of the land <clears throat> um, and, and removing the fear of the Lord or, or the fear, fear not, O land, and be glad and rejoice, right? Bring joy and rejoicing to the land. Um, and, and and then the 
the things which are to bear and produce do so abundantly, tree bearing its fruit, fig and vine giving full yield, um, and rejoicing in the, for the children of Zion, rejoicing not in themselves, but in the Lord your God, who has given the early rain for your vindication, right? poured down for you abundant rain. The early and the latter rain is before, and and in the in the area of Jerusalem, you know, it's, it's an arid area, an arid country, and and so um, early and regular rain means more abundant crops. It, it's interesting. I was speaking with oh years ago now, um, with my dear friend Jeff Eager, who is a uh, a corn farmer and a corn seed salesman, and he was explaining to me that that the um, the crop. And you've got to have you've got to have the moisture to get things going in the spring, and you've got to get the the corn plant up. Uh, and maybe some of you already know this, but um, actually the last the last few weeks of uh, the growing season before the uh, before the the corn plant begins to die off and dry up um, are actually as critical as anything for rainfall um, because all that energy that's been put into uh, preparing during the summer is pushed into the into the seeds into the, the kernels um, in that in that last few weeks and if you know you could have a great spring and a wonderful summer with the right amounts of moisture and things if you have a dry fall um, the the crop harvest the harvest of your crop is not as as plentiful as it as it as it could be if you don't get those those rains in the early early fall or early autumn when the corn is reaching that that 75th day on like on a 90 day corn um, that it's pushing that that liquid and that energy and, and nutrition into the kernels at that point. So the early rain is good to get the crop going, but you need the late rain too to, to really feed it. I, I imagine the same thing is with the grapes of the vine or uh, perhaps not wheat. I think wheat grows in a different fashion, but maybe, I don't know. Jeff, if you're listening, you can, you can uh, let me know. Um, but then when the time comes when the harvest is, the threshing floor shall be full of grain. The vats overflow with wine and oil. <coughs> because, of course, wine and oil are made the same way. You crush the grapes, you crush the olives. Um, and I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, the great army, which I sent among you, and you shall eat in plenty. So God reverses everything that he's done. He sets it sets it back, right? In, in, in the repentance of the people, God again provides in abundance beyond, um, beyond just for today, but for always. And there's a place I could go there, but I'm not going to today. Um, and you shall know that I, that I am. Yahweh, I am in the midst of Israel, and the I am Yahweh, the Lord your God. Uh, and there is none else. Right? There is no other God. Well, I mean, people, small g, people form gods for themselves, right? And the and the pagans and the and the ethne, those who are not of the Jews, are quick to find these these gods for themselves. And we are too. We we're, we're quick. We may not think of them as gods, but we're quick to to turn to um, uh, other other things in our world and and um, worship them. Now, it may not be. Uh, it may, wow, there's a bunch of new comments here. I just refreshed. Uh, it may not be. Uh, our, our worship may not involve bowing down um, or praying to. Um, but what is a god? Well, we we teach our children in a, in a in a in the catechism in in teaching the faith to our children. We say a god is that in which you fear, love, and trust above all things, right? And so you know, money very quickly, money becomes a god, an idol, because people fear, love, and trust in their in their wealth, right? The wealth will sustain me. What do I need God for? I have money. Um, health becomes an idol, um, and other things. Um, but God is our God, God who provides these things, God who knows all these things, God who can withhold and God who can give, right? Um, and he knows what he's going to do already. But again, just because he knows, because he's Alpha and Omega, he's outside of time and can see all these things, just because he knows doesn't mean that he's necessarily the cause of the taking away and the giving, but he is the cause of the giving, right? God gives us all good things. This is getting overly complicated. <laughs> 
for a Monday morning. Let's continue on with the task. I shall, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And now we are talking about Christ. All along, we've been talking about the restoration of Israel, but now it shall come to pass um, afterward in the days that come uh, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And this passage is quoted in the book of Acts by Peter, right? In Peter's <clears throat> great sermon uh, on Pentecost. Now, I shall come, out, come to pass afterward, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, even on the male and the female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. God sends his spirit upon all people. Right? Now, not all people receive it, right? It's received by faith. But God desires that all would turn and believe in his only begotten son, that by believing we might have faith in him, and by, by having faith in him, we might be saved from sin, death, and hell. That's, that's, that's the whole purpose of the church and everything else. It's not programs or the feeding of the poor. And that. it's, it's building faith in Christ. That's the whole point. Um, and this is it. Even Moses said in his day, when when um, God had said he was going to put a, a portion of Moses's of, of his spirit upon Moses' elders so that they might bear the burden with him as they're going through the wilderness and such, um, those men who were command, commanded to be at the front of the tabernacle with Moses, <clears throat> when God did this, those who were, I'll come later, um, received it out in the out in the uh, out amongst the people, and and uh, they began to prophesy out in the camp. And I think it's I can't remember who it was. I don't think it was Joshua, but somebody says Moses. Moses this is going on out in the camp. Yeah, you know, aren't you upset? These are the only ones that are supposed to be doing this. And and Moses said, Would that all God's people were prophets. Would that all God's people would would proclaim His His word and His promise. Um, it would make it easier because if you're going to proclaim it, you got to believe it. And if you believe it, then you that's a good thing. So this is the coming of Christ. And that's the promise from, you know, the Old Testament we've been reading in all year, friends, remember, it's about Jesus. It, 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 yeah, there's a lot of other stuff going on, the history of the people, the poetry, the wisdom, um, the events, but all of these events are the events of salvation pointing towards Christ, pointing towards God's work in Christ Jesus, who will and did and does come for you. That by his work, by his blood shed upon the cross, we might have the gift of eternal life, the promise of salvation, the forgiveness of sins, God's wrath which in latter years he poured out upon the people in the world is now poured out fully upon Christ. And he took it on his, on his shoulders. He took the cross. He, he, he allowed himself to be crucified and suffer so that you and everyone else from Adam to, <clears throat> to whoever the last person born is could be forgiven, that he could bear their sin. You know, and Moses and Abraham and others saw this day, the day that the Lord did this. Even though they were not with us, they saw it. They saw it by faith. Daniel knew it was coming. David knew it was coming. And we know that it has come and is now and forever. Your salvation in Christ Jesus alone, by faith alone. Word alone, grace alone. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day here, somewhere here. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your mercy, guide the course of this world so that your church may joyfully serve you in godly peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue here in a moment with it. Oh, uh, let's see here. Just real quick. Uh, Kathy, good morning. And Renee, hello. Deb and Grant and Ann, good morning. 
And Michael, amen. Okay, amen. I don't know what I said that was so good, but amen. Let's um, continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. That was probably too fast. I apologize. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. As he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For ourselves and others on this Monday morning, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping me safe during the night. Now I pause at the gateway of another week to ask you to go with me. I do not know what this week holds, pleasure or pain, health or sickness, sunshine or shadow. However, I am not afraid if you will be my companion. For you love me with an everlasting love and you guard and protect me from all evil. I need your presence every step of the way at the beginning of the week. I ask only that you would stay close beside me. For though I do not know what the future holds, I know who holds the future. Bless me in whatever I do. Make me strong physically, mentally, morally, and spiritually. Watch over me and over those whom I love. I ask this in the name of your beloved Son, who is my Savior and Redeemer, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, we were praying for vocations here, and then we kind of got off of that, but uh, let us pray. Lord Jesus, you were the, a carpenter's son. You know the joys and sorrows of a working person. You see the dignity of labor, for you labored by the sweat of your brow. Through your apostle, you commanded every person to do honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Help me to be faithful in my work and grant me the grace to work for you, my master. Enable me to be the source of joy to my earthly employer by giving the best of my service, an honest portion of my time, and a ready willingness to cooperate in carrying out my duties. Give my employer a sense of responsibility to you and bless the position of trust that you have granted to him or her. Make my work successful so that my earnings can put be put to the use pleasing to you. If it is your will, keep me in good health and give me continual, continued employment. When I fall short of what I ought to be, forgive me, Lord. Help me in all I do to show that I am yours and that you are my Lord and my master. Enable me to be a good example by my speech and conduct so that those I work with may be drawn to you and find the joy that is mine in being yours. Amen. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing, your comfort, and your assurance upon those who suffer, whether it be in body, mind, or soul. We ask, Lord, that you help us to rejoice with those who have joy and to suffer with those who are suffering. Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, Renee, and all those whom, you, uh, whom we call with your, uh, all those who call upon your most holy name, hear their prayers and ours for the sake of your Son, who is our Lord, even Jesus the Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, <laughs> we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, 
your dear son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotion to a close for this this uh, Monday morning. God's peace be, I suppose I should update here and just make sure I didn't miss anyone or anything or something or other or uh, what have you. Oh, okay, yeah, see, there's, there's, uh, there's Kendra. Good morning, Kendra. Glad you joined us here, even if it was towards the end of things, or I saw it towards the end of things. Hey, God's peace be with all of you, and we will see you back here tomorrow, Tuesday morning, Greek Tuesday, for our daily devotions together. God's peace.